All right, welcome back to the program, Dr. Jumokel Duwale, Special Advisor to the President on PEVEC. And Investments is joining me right here. Dr. Oduwale, good to see you again and welcome to the program. Thank you. Much. Now let's get started. The 2023 Compliance Report, E001. Uh, so many, so many acronyms. <laughs> let, let, let me just <laughs> cut myself some Business slack. Business Facilitation Act. I'm telling Act, Act yes. 2022. Let's stay with that. Yes. Uh, DFA, yes. just for, you know, <laughs> too many long words in this country. <laughs> anyway, this report, January to June, mm -hmm. What is the difference in this report? Why is this report different from the others in the series? Because this is the eighth, mm -hmm. I'm aware. What makes this report different from when you started? Yeah. I mean, the, the significant difference with this report is that the Executive Order 1, which was signed in 2017, was passed into law in 2022. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time that the compliance report actually has a legal implication, not just a regulatory responsibility. Why did it even take that long from 2017 to be signed into law in 2022? I've always wanted no, to ask it, you it that. Was a, it was an executive order. Yeah, okay, yeah sure. so it was it an was, executive order. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, I we remember decided, President Buhari yes, then. Yes, so we decided it. to, to um, take it through legislation as part of the omnibus bill. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the coalition working with the Nigerian Bar Association section of business law on 21 other legislations. And um, it took five years. Yeah, yeah, that took five years. That's a long time. Yes, that took five years. Just engaging with pub, pub, private sector, determining which can go in the omnibus bill, and then working through the legislative process, the legal drafting with Ministry of Justice, and um, going through the National Assembly and then presidential assent. Mm. Yeah. So what's different in this report before we drill down into some of those numbers, what, what were your findings? Um, you know, it was political season. The reason why we, we published it and we published it now is just to show ministries, departments and agencies where they were, how things slowed down so they can double up before the year ends. We sometimes publish a half year report. We always publish a full year report. So we published this half year report and we released it in October, though we've had the data just to give uh, ministries, departments, and agency an opportunity to self-reflect and to double up on their compliance. So what have you noticed it's in the series in terms of um, acceptance, in, in terms of acceptance of doing what that, uh, uh, in terms of acceptance to offering themselves to the measurements? Because I've always said you cannot manage what you can't actually also measure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is the level of MDA's acceptance to even you and your team doing this job? Well, there are two sides to it. Uh, there's the public sector side and there's the private sector side. So with the public sector side, which you're asking about right now, I think that it's been mixed. Some agencies have been very interested in the compliance and have even asked to be included on the, on the compliance measurement uh, tracking mechanism. Some agencies are pretty indifferent and do not submit compliance, so they just get an automatic zero. Mm. Yeah, because when the executive order was signed, the then vice president insisted that we have sensitization and we have training. So with the office of the secretaries of the government and the office of the head of civil service, with Servicom, with BPSR and, and the PEBEC secretariat, we did extensive training and sensitization of a large number of MDAs especially the ones that have business climate, are not limited to. And so as time went on, some became even more diligent. You have, that's why we also recognize the most improved. Mm. And then some just fell off the radar completely. And we always write letters. When we notice there's a dip, we write letters, we engage heads of agency, ministers, to say, look, there's been a, a lack of compliance or an apathy towards compliance of a, then executive order one. What were their reasons? What were the reasons given to you? Perhaps for non-compliance or for just having absolute zero? Just well, like you see, I don't <laughs> think, I don't think that... Um, or, or, or they are just being indifferent because this was an executive order which has yeah. now become, yes. you know, a law. Yes. So we track and we give the results. Mm. The secretariat is agnostic. We're tracking an executive order and you can see over time the historicals are all there on our website and 
all the agencies, the 53 of them, get physical copies every time we release a report. So it's not for lack of knowledge. I wouldn't be able to say why. Do you engage with them Some well? agencies, yeah, we engage Before. with we engage with, with uh, MDAs. I wouldn't be able to say why mm. some participate and some don't, but those who are willing and interested and are committed, the results speak for themselves. You see agencies that have come from the back to take an interest and become most improved. You see NOTAP, you see CBN, um, you see uh, NERC, and then you see agencies that have consistently, like Nigerian Local Content Board, have consistently been at the top and very interested. The leadership, I think it boils down to leadership. The leadership is really interested and committed. They have their customer service week without fail. They asked for a Pebe kiosk so that people that come into their agency can actually log in complaints physically as well as their web-based app for reportgov.ng. Mm. So I think that our role as facilitators of reforms the executive order took quite a bit of a uh, political capital and taking it through the National Assembly, working with the Ministry of Justice to draft it into a legal a piece of legislation and working with the National Assembly and getting presidential assent was quite a lot of work with, with a ton of stakeholders. And that is for, uh, to, for posterity, to make sure that it wasn't just an executive order. And the current administration has uh, been extremely committed to continuity and sustainability. And so we released this half year report. We've written and engaged with some MDAs. We had a stakeholder sensitization session the day we released the report. And so we're looking forward to more traction next year. Let's just assume that there was a lot of political distractions going on in the first half of the year. When we have the second half of the year results, although we have some of the data, we'll see. Uh, but Nigerians will be able to see by Q1 next year what the year looked like and where we're heading to next. 53 MDAs were measured mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm aware. Now, if we take a look at the um, specific measurements, mm -hmm. I know you mentioned about two when you were speaking. Speak to me about other criteria which these agencies were. So measured. we looked at transparency, we looked mm -hmm. at efficiency. Under those two buckets, for, for transparency, for instance, we look at the websites. Are the websites up to date? Are all the procedures documented on the website? If there's a change in procedure, is it reflected and updated on the website? We look at service level agreements. Are the ministries, departments, and agencies complying with the timelines, with the requirements that they have put up themselves on their websites? And, and so we measure that. They submit monthly reports, so they ought to submit monthly reports. And so we triangulate that information. We reach out to stakeholders to find out whether or not that really did happen. And so sometimes we get incredible commendations. Yes, they exceeded our expectations. Sometimes we get um, information that lets us know that perhaps an agency is trying to game the system a little bit and say, mm -hmm. uh, stakeholders are like, no, 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 that didn't happen. So um, transparency and efficiency of public service delivery is what is tracked. We're trying to make sure that MDAs have a systemic uh, reform agenda in their regulatory um, space. The other side of the equation that I'd like to talk about is the private sector uptake mm. of using ReportGov or even looking at the six directives in the Business Facilitation Act, formerly Executive Order 1. So we have the need for a single interface at the airports, at the seaports. We have the directive for transparency, the directive for starting a business. And so the, the one government directive and the default, the default approval directive, we have not had a lot of uptake, whether it's from lack of trust, skepticism, mm. I mean, cynicism, the trust deficit is there. So we continue to speak about it and urge private sector to utilize the directives and test the system. We continue to work on the back end with MDAs to make sure that they're, they're able, they're ready and able to deliver those services to, to the private sector. So I think that it's one of continuous improvement. It's not to put MDAs down, their colleagues will work together. It's to help us improve the system. So we need the feedback on both mm. sides. It's also not to put private sector under pressure, but to make sure that we're conforming to the situation because private sector also does um, 
test the system or harm the system by going around um, legislative procedures, offering bribes to expedite things. So that kind of behavior doesn't support systemic change, nor does the extortion and rent seeking, corruption, basically the elephant in the room. So let's call it like it is. We're trying to fix a system and everybody has to be involved. How, how has uh, uh, making business easier changed since th this is this is just, uh, this is just uh, have I even told you congratulations on this because this second now <laughs> you were saying to the to President Buhari on this same on yes. the, in, in this same office and President yes. Tinubu uh, is also found you worthy to put you again in this position so this is like second time. Thank saying you. perhaps you should continue mm -hmm. the job. So congrats. I know we've talked off camera, but thank you. Publicly, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, congratulations. So uh, since you started this work, now it's mentioned earlier, Pebec established in 2016 till now. 2016 till now is how many years? Seven. I, I leave you to do the maths. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how have your office, how has your office made businesses, doing businesses easier? Because that's actually your mandate in terms yeah. of removing bureaucratic as well as legislative constraints because many nigerians are still are groaning yeah out there Certainly. firs i have spoken to taiwo yedele mm -hmm. many times i think he was also on last week where he was speaking to me about the reforms that he and his colleagues are trying to do in the, that sector you talk about multiple taxation mm -hmm. you talk about customer service to reducing even at the airport at the mm -hmm. time it improved i mm -hmm. would say that yeah. but it's is is yeah. it's decreased mm -hmm. now you my guest yesterday uh, one of the advisors to Delta State Governor told me that he was supposed to, his flight was supposed to be 6 p.m. They moved it to 2 p.m. People, d d so things, things like that. Yeah. You know, so how has your office made businesses easier? Doing businesses yeah. in Nigeria easier? Because that's the cocoa of all these things we're it talking is, about. It is. All this ranking, it yeah. will boil down to So the to council has a easy. dual mandate to remove bureaucratic and legislative bottlenecks and also to improve the perception which is uh, part of what you're speaking to, the impact, the tangible impact, and the perception. And I would say that we are facilitators. It's actually the MDAs and the private sector that put together make the business climate friendlier, easier, working together, collaborating. So starting on the, on the first side of what has uh, the PEBEC mm -hmm. in particular been able to achieve since 2016, I mean, there have been numerous, over 180 reform. Some have been felt more than others, like with starting a business, it used to be six manual forms and it became one form and it was put online and the manual process was completely aborted. That meant that you can register your business in 48 hours and you can reserve a business name within four hours. We worked on the technology to enable that. Now the human challenge is such that when the leadership uh, backslides, the reforms mm. unravel. So we've had situations with different agencies where we've had very vibrant leadership, like with the Immigration Service, uh, Comptroller General Babandede was just phenomenal. He was just reform-minded. We've had um, different particular leaders that have an affinity to business climate reforms. I remember one night I called him around 9 p.m. to say there was a company that reached out to me, Flying Doctors, they had a patient in Liberia that needed an appendectomy in Nigeria and needed to be flown in. And the person was from Zambia, so didn't have ECOWAS, couldn't come into Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And he issued an emergency medical visa, and that person was able to have the operation be flown in, stabilized, and by 3 a.m., the appendectomy was done. And from that, he understood the importance of medical tourism and made it actually a category. That's what it takes to be reform-minded. So we've had huge successes with some people, and we've had a lot of resistance from mm. other people who feel it's a threat, who feel it's a challenge on their authority, who prefer to work in silos. But we, we like to speak about Team Nigeria and how it affects everyone. It affects um, the amount of business that comes into Nigeria. It affects the factories that are established. It affects foreign direct investment. For instance, our agencies working together at the airport Nobody asks, was it Port's Health, was it Customs, was it, if you're frustrated, you're going to set up your factory in another company in Ghana, Rwanda, and you're still targeting the Nigerian market. So we spent a lot of time trying to educate our public and civil servants that when the dirty water splashes, it splashes on all of mm. us, and it comes back to have effect on all of us, on our economy, 
and on our children, on jobs, which is what we all want. Our young people don't have enough jobs. And even our young people that are so entrepreneurial, let their businesses grow, let their businesses breathe and thrive. It, is, it behoves on all of us. There's a collective self-interest to make the business climate better. And I always try to make the point that the hardships that people experience, it's about Nigerians on Nigerians. We have a lot of good laws. We have a lot of good regulations in place, reforms that have been um, implemented on paper, reforms that have been implemented from the top. But when the rubber meets the road, the agents, the, agents, the officers, um, the public and civil servants facing the private sector, the MSMEs, sometimes we're not too kind to each other. And it's both ways. Private sector can be extremely disrespectful of public, civil, and, and public and civil servants can really ex assume that everybody has a price and that people can just be treated anyhow. I've had to caution private sector not once, not twice over the last seven years. So as Nigerians, we have to self-interrogate. Do we really want to build this economy? I'm glad that the president is extremely passionate and committed to this area. He's speaking, he was just speaking live in Germany, in Germany. just a few minutes yeah. ago. And he has consistently, since May 29, being on the economy, on the economy. The eight-point agenda, the PEBEC mandate uh, directly affects six out of the eight and two indirectly. Oh. So it's a priority project. The third cohort of the PEBEC was inaugurated last week. Okay. And the, the, the four pillars that we've been on, the regulatory, the very vibrant subnational intervention that we haven't even spoken about, are legislative and judicial reforms like the small claims courts, and of course our strategic communications because people have to know these reforms to be able to take advantage of them, continue to be top on the front burner. We also have our new business champions program, which speaks to medium and larger size enterprises, prioritizing their problems because they have a cascading effect onto the entire economy as a whole. Now let's talk about some of the agencies that of course the top uh, reformers, uh, NCDMB, that's mm -hmm. Ni Nigerian Content Development Monetary Board. I mentioned yeah. them earlier, SON, NAQS, NERC, then NEMSA. Of course, NEMSA, many people don't even know that agency. <laughs> yeah. You know, there are, there are many agencies, many Nigerians don't know. But I actually did say, in a layman's language, what that agency, among what they do, Transformers and Co., um, Nigerian Ex uh, Export Import Bank, NEXIB. I'm taking a look at the deep green, the light mm -hmm. green, and the light green ended at the FCCPC, that is a former Consumer Protection, Protection Council, yeah. for those of you that don't know. Um, now, mm, let's take it, okay, top, top five, or top, top, or top seven, actually, let's put it that way. So, efficiency score, I'm seeing 80, from 84 to 53, that's for CSA. Mm -hmm. So, NC, NCDMB has... You said has been, you know. Yes, yeah, CDMB has been a chart. consistent reformer, have been very interested in the mandate. Um, I know the leadership well. They came from private sector. They were at Shell, the person who runs the intervention, the executive director, and the head of the agency. So compliance is like in their DNA. So they've taken a liking and, and, a, a, and a discipline. They have a discipline and an mm -hmm. affinity to processes, to service level agreements, to meeting timelines. Many people don't know what they do there, the local yeah, content local board, content, then oil, and, oil gas and gas sector, mm -hmm. yes. So other agencies, we continue to look out for their reports. Some of them, we know that they're not doing as badly as they may be reflected there, mm -hmm. but we cannot base the assessment on anecdotal information. If the compliance report is not submitted on the last Friday of every month, then it's an automatic zero. We also have input from ICPC has a report and then uh, BPRC has a report also. So we take some data on the websites, transparency, service level agreements, and we triangulate the information along with the robust um, window shopping, mystery shopping from the private sector customers. Mm -hmm. it, it's a journey of continuous improvement. What we want is not for agencies to be embarrassed. What we want is for agencies to pay attention. What it takes is for the leadership to pay attention to this compliance. Are your phone lines functioning? Is somebody picking up the phone is lines? Your website when up to e date? Yes, your website up yeah. to date. When an email is sent, is Nobody there a response within, within uh, 
specified amount of mm -hmm. hours, the requirements for your processes, are they laid out? If something changes, do you update your website? So the timelines that you, you stated, if you stated it takes seven days, do you adhere to the seven days? If something goes wrong and it's going to take longer, do you inform, do you respond to letters when you're written to by the private sector, or do you just ignore it and wait for them to come to your office? Do you work with the premise of one government? Do you exchange information back end, or do you make I private sector interface. Yeah, go around you know, mm. submitting the same documents to different government agencies? It is a mindset. If we want to support private sector, if we want things to be easier, faster, cheaper, if we want the economy to grow, it's a mindset that all of us have to have. Mm. Yes. Okay. So that's what we're trying to. It's a systemic intervention. We're trying to develop that mindset and to support that mindset. Mm. You know, I have to let you go very soon, and <laughs> we have so much to talk about. But let, let's just take a quick look at those that scored zero, and I'll call them by names. There's no <laughs> politics in this. National Broadcasting Commission, even our regulator, now scored zero. Do better. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, oh God, what? National Broadcasting Commission, zero? NDLEA, that's surprising. Um, yeah. Bank of Industry, that's yeah. also surprising because I also do know what yeah, Bank of Industry exactly. is doing. Yeah. All and gas free zones, authority, zero. Used to be number one at a point. At a point. Yeah. So what happened? Mm. I'm, calling, I'm calling you all out this morning. Yeah. National Collateral Registry, I'm also actually surprised because I've had their leadership, uh, the various heads of NCR come here on the show. Yeah, wow. that's one of the public reforms. We yes, supported yes, the legislation. Support, yes. Yeah, through the CBN. Yeah, I know. After this call, I'm calling you straight away. Please do, please do. National <laughs> Collateral Registry, zero. Special Control Units Against Money Laundering, zero. Nigeria Customs Service, what? 0, 0.00. And you, are sh you should be a trade facilitator. A Actually, very important for one for a trading nation like ours, yes. Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. I don't understand. Okay, let's say not this George Akumas, <laughs> not this George Akumas before, office before, before the predecessors. Okay, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Joint Tax Board zero. Nigeria Police Force. Mm. Mm, I don't know whether to it's say. It's a I'm long the list. It's a long list. It's a long list, and what it is is that DSS two zero. Yeah. DSS, There's National Intelligence somewhere. Agency (NIA), the Presidential Tax Force on Money, money Laundering. Zero. These agencies have called are those that scored zero. Okay, so that's even it on the screen there. Certainly they didn't make any submissions, mm. and that's what it means. We can't go by anecdotal perception. Yeah. So it's an executive order. It's not the PEBEC secretariat. This was signed uh, by the presidency, and this is now a law. So there's a mechanism for tracking it that has been in place since 2017. We write agencies regularly. We uh, have periodic trainings. We have back-end support. And so agencies that choose for whatever reason, and you know sometimes another thing that happens in the leadership change, maybe somebody who was, you know, it's now a continuity challenge. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the civil servant or the, or the reform champion is, is posted, redeployed, or retires and then nobody picks it up. So we always ask, can you tell us who the new reform champion is? Can you tell us who the new members of the EO1 team is? Because every agency is supposed to have a five uh, member um, committee that works on this, because it's a lot of work. When the, mm. when the report gov complaints come in, the, it has to be solved through the agency and the Federal Executive Council gave a 72 hour timeline for MDAs to get back to private sector we're trying to make sure that government is responsive. If private sector, and it's not a whistleblowing app, that's the report gov now that I'm talking about, mm. which we use to have, test the pulse of the executive order one. We should respond. We should um, collaborate. We should communicate and solve mm. challenges for private sector. That's really the job of government and regulators in particular as enablers. We should answer questions. We should give information. We should respond promptly in a timely manner. Some of the agencies are not conventional. Some mm. have a direct interface yeah. with public, with mm. private sector. Some are non-conventional. But private sector, this list came about by private sector saying either we have to write, we have some sort of interface with this agency, and 
we can't get information. It's really about a lot of information and communication, service level agreements, transparency mm -hmm. websites, um, things like that. So we've, we've, we've gone through it again at the, at the inauguration of the third uh, cohort of the PEBEC. This now forms part of the uh, essential delivery unit of Mr. President. And um, so we're, we're, let's just say that uh -huh. this, is, this is coming into a new dispensation. So There'll be so new energy. We'll see, yes. you know, because I, I wanted to ask if you're already seeing a different uh, a vibe, perhaps from this the well, this, this, this was January to June. To June, yes. yes. So yes. I guess perhaps it's work ongoing now from July it's to December. It's work ongoing. There's been a lot of new appointments. There's been redeployments. But the, the inaugural meeting was very good. Mm -hmm. The head of service has all the historical um, institutional memory and has been very supportive. The permanent secretaries were all there. So we're really um, hoping that come next year, by the time we, we look at H2 of mm -hmm. 2023 mm -hmm. and even going into 2024, that the energy and it the, yes, yes, certainly. Mm -hmm. the, the optics are looking really, it's energized. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. We had a very energizing meeting last, last Thursday, the, the inaugural PEBEC cohort, third cohort for this administration. So now, let me ask you this question before you go. The president at the cabinet retreat talked about Result delivery unit. So when I read this your report, I was trying to connect the dots and say, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know how Dr. Jumoke's um, job and your team will tie into Hadiza Bala's oh. team. Yeah. Would that be a linkage? Because the president actually oh, gave his, his, his already is. Yes, okay, his ministers go yeah. and do your work. If you mm -hmm. don't work, I'll fire you. Mm -hmm. You know that was what he yeah. said at the cabinet retreat. So I'm, I can imagine that the success of these MDAs will also tie into the yes. success of the ministers. It will, it will count for them. It counts uh -huh. into that, so that because the, I, that's why I said that the eight-point agenda, six out of mm. those eight are directly on the, and the, and the PEBEX mandate is an enabler. Mm. So it supports all of them and then it, it actually counts for them as well. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so quarterly there'll be uh, information fed into the central delivery coordination unit finally <laughs> what i hear you say the denominator has always been especially for those that have not performed well is that of leadership positive vibes around leadership what do you think we should do especially as you go get this new administration with perhaps new heads of those agencies or even if they are old ones for them to have new spirit how do we create a political will, not create now, fortify? I use this word at the NES, uh, NESG, <laughs> yes, because I hear it a lot that there's no political will. When another administration comes, it goes, uh, the next person is not interested. So how do you think that we should fortify? So Nancy, it's not really something. So, you know, it's leadership. And the president that we have now, nobody is trying to force him to fortify. He said it himself. So if you, are, if you don't he do it on your own. He, he said it himself. Like, you can just quote him, and that's it. So let's just, let's just watch how everything unfolds. I'm, I'm a perennial optimist mm. uh, for Nigeria and for the economy, but I think that let's just be expectant that with the ministerial retreat, with the, with the PEBEC, with all this tracking and transparent information that we give Nigerians and the delivery unit, that we're going to have certainly what gets measured gets done. And this president is committed. He says failure is not an option. He doesn't intend to fail, and he doesn't intend to let anybody make him fail. So mm. I, I'm particularly optimistic about this. Okay. On that note, Dr. Oduwale, let's leave it to that. <laughs> we'll continue another time. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah. Always a pleasure. All right. I've been speaking with Dr. Jumoke Oduwale, who is the special advisor to the president on PEBEC and investments. We've been talking about the half-year EO1 compliance report. We'll continue to bring you that ranking. In fact, we'll be showing it on our bricks so that those agencies, we know that uh, we're after them. But just like she said, it's actually Team Nigeria, everyone. If Nigeria works for all of us,